and welcome back to my channel. I am sure you are very curious to hear what I think about my time at Porsche. It is now released on the Nintendo Switch, the PS4, the Xbox One and the PC. First of all, thank you so much for the review code from Team17. Now let's begin. My Time at Porsche is a simulation RPG game by Panthea Games, published by Team17, released last year on PC actually, and now on console. Finally! I have really been waiting for this. In short, this is a crafting and collecting life simulator game where you have a house, a plot of land, and tools to gather materials. This game has a complex building system with hundreds of items and resources to both gather collect and use. It is also a social simulator where you can build relationships with the citizens and an action RPG as well with hack and slash real-time combat and a whole bunch of quests. As a matter of fact this game pretty much have it all as there are so many different things that you can do across this game so you know this review is gonna take some time I'm sure and I won't even be able to go over everything that this game has to offer in this review but I'm gonna give it a real good try. I am going to tell you everything that you need to know before you decide on buying this game. If you like Stardew Valley, this is Stardew Valley in 3D and on steroids. If you have ever loved any of the good old Harvest Moon games, you're gonna love this one. Or even if you have been a fan of Animal Crossing, you will love this one. Story! My time at Portia is set in the post-apocalyptic world of Portia, where you are assigned the role of a workshop owner with uh, building and crafting machines and work tables at your disposal. You create items, which again, you need to create another set of items, which you will need to create even more complex end items. So it is somewhat like Minecraft. When you go digging in the mines, you will find all the relics from the old world, like washing machines and CDs, electronics and old engines. The main religion in Portia is the Church of Light, and they are against the use of the old world's relics, but on the other hand, you have the research center, which are for the older relics. And they want you to donate the data disks to them so that they can decipher them and then give you new diagrams, which means you can build new constructions. And just like in Stardew Valley, each and every one of the characters in Portia have their unique stories that you will unlock and get to know the higher in friendship level you get with them. Gameplay. You start out with a fairly small plot of land and a bad old house. And as you progress several quests and requests from citizens, you will be able to purchase more land and expand your house. Some quests have time limits, as others don't and are more considered main storyline quests to unlock new places on the map for you to explore, for example. Let's take a look at the menu tabs. Well, you first have the inventory tab, which is pretty basic and straightforward. You can view your stats, your character, your equipped items, your current level and your inventory bank, which you can expand by purchasing more rows using the in-game currency. You can auto-sort your bags by pressing down the analog stick L. Very convenient. Character tab, you have a skill tree and where you can assign your skill points down into fight gather or social, you get one point each level that you level up. Handbook, workshop handbook and recipes for all machines that you can build on the assembly station, which is the sort of platform near your house where you can assemble constructions. You have your mission tab that shows all quests that are completed or current and commerce commissions. Social tab, you can view your friendship levels and preferences on each and every citizen. Map tab, fairly big and decent map I wanna say, showing all the information that you need regarding places, dungeons and quests. Calendar tab, you have four seasons, which is spring, summer, fall and winter. Each season has four weeks and there are seven days a week. Every single season there are festivals and events like like for example snowball battles in the winter, fishing day, martial arts tournament which I won 
one, by the way. And you know, all sorts of random stuff that happens. So you pay attention to all the uh, in-game events on the calendar. Photos tab, where you can view your event photos, which is actually sort of funny. You will unlock photos here the more you have progressed in the main story or unlocked, you know, certain events with certain characters. So basically, there are so many things to do in this game. It is simply mind-blowing to me. Lose track of time in the incredibly addicting mines. Fight away at a whole bunch of enemies in what feels like some sort of stage-based dungeons. And consistently overall just feel a great sense of progression with basically pretty much everything that you do and create and you level up and everything feels very satisfying because you progress in so many different things in this game, if you know what I mean. You can even build a stable where you can have horses or a coop where you can have chickens and ducks and even further into the game, which I haven't gotten to yet actually, you can have cows and all sorts of, you know, basically livestock. You can raise livestock. So, I mean, this game is basically nailing it in the gameplay. And even, you know, there's a lot of things you have to consider if you want to make the most money in this game, because money and resources and all sorts of things, they are very essential in this game in order to progress and upgrade your home or buy more plots of land and even, like, afford your first horse, I mean. So, to make the most profit, you sell when the market price is high. All the stores in the game, they can range from 87% or something like that as a market price. That is a good buying day. That's the day you want to buy stuff. Or like all the way up to 130% of market value. That's the day where you sell your stuff to make the most profit. <laughs> Graphics. So about the graphics, I like it a lot. I really do. Uh, 3D all the way, I love 3D games. So it is colorful and happy and an incredible attention to detail, like inside the homes of the citizens and just in general in the streets of Portia. All the NPCs have their set day-to-day -day schedules and are obviously living their own lives. I feel like I get to know them even more simply by observing their day-to-day -day lives. It is simply incredible. Incredible, I think some places the graphics could use some improving and I have to mention in this section that the switch version is struggling to say the least. It is very evident that it is struggling with frame rate and it's sort of like lags which is kind of unfortunate. I have come across bugs where big chunks of the world is simply not fully loaded in and sometimes the character is like standing inside a tree or even like some trees are <laughs> graphically not loaded in but you can still cut them down or kick them. Like some sort of things in the game world sometimes not fully loaded in. But it's kind of just like funny because um, I have found no game breaking bugs or glitches so far in this game so you know they're just sort of funny. <laughs> the loading screens are incredibly long. That is absolutely not good. Music! I think the music is overall wonderful actually. Great tunes, addicting tunes, like sort of humming along kind of tunes, if you know what I mean. But they're very atmospheric. I have to mention I got really easily tired of one specific tune that was repeatedly playing in the season of spring. But other than that, I was fine. I am, however, very much missing some sort of footsteps sound effects. It sounds really off in some of the later, like, story-based dungeons also, where there's suddenly no sound effects for some sort of reason. Voiceovers. When I played this game one year ago on PC, I got the beta key, because I've had my eyes on this game for a very long time, let's just say. But you know, the beta version had voice acting, but this version does not and there was some rumors but I'm not gonna go into that <laughs> verdict so my verdict of my time at Porsche it is a dream game I have felt like a really 
heavy, big addiction and longing for this sort of genre to bloom more in modern days. It is a dream game for me because it is a life simulator of the sorts of which I love. This is a game which I will be putting and have been putting a ton of hours into and still are not done. There are so many different things to do in a life simulator like this. Well, it is like building and crafting and relationships and customizing your home and character and everything. You live a life. You even have a mailbox outside your house. I mean, you have neighbors and you get to know them gradually. And there's like an economy system in this game for God's sake. There are so many things to unlock and there are so many quests. This game simply has it all. It even has fishing. I, I even forgot to mention that it has fishing. Horseback riding. I mean, this game has cooking. You can buy different sort of clothes and there is a commerce guild where you can take on a request every day and compete to be the best workshop in town. And you even have a rival. I mean, this game. So you know, it is basically, like I said earlier in the review anyway, uh, Stardew Valley in 3D and just improved on and just so much better. I am enjoying my time at Porsche immensely. Who do I recommend this game for? I recommend it for you if you enjoyed what you saw in this video. I recommend it for you if you have ever enjoyed Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon, Animal Crossing, even like sort of like The Sims, Minecraft, the mines, they're fabulous, they're good. So you have to have a little sort of patience with this sort of game because it is not a game that you sit down with for one session and beat it. No, this is a sort of game you play throughout years, which is the sort of game that I love. We need more games in this genre is what I'm trying to say and even like fighting in implemented this is sort of also the recipe for rune factory why I was so obsessed with rune factory and still are so basically if I could create a game I would create pretty much this game it has farming and racing animals and you know all these things I want to say the longevity of this game is plus 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 this game is gonna last me for a very long time because it is gonna take forever to unlock all the plots of land because I've gotten to the point where a new plot of land is like 100,000 in-game money. I'm not nearly done now. I've been playing this for 60 hours already. I can absolutely feel that the developers of this game, they cared. The bad things of this game are the loading times and like the overall performance right now on the Switch. It's not really good, uh, but I survive with what I have now anyway. I'm simply forgiving the loading times as of right now because I'm loving the game so much. My time at Porsche is getting 10 out of 10 from me. What can I say? I am really recommending this game and I've been looking so much forward to reviewing this game finally. I hope you enjoyed my video today and if you are new I want you to subscribe because here are some of my other Switch reviews. I review a bunch of Switch games on this channel. I want you to be subscribed and I also want you to have your notification bell on so that you know whenever I am posting a new video. Follow my Twitter and my Instagram. I post there every day and if you want your name scrolling on the side you can support my channel on patreon.com slash isha i am upgrading my lens equipment now really soon so thank you so much for supporting me on patreon next up is actually to upgrade my microphone we're looking forward to upgrades thank you so much for watching and i will see you later bye